Pod, 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 Pod Diva. My name is Rachel Shelley, and today for Lesbian Visibility Week, I'm speaking with Kai Hoyle. Kai is the founder of Shush, the UK's first female focused sex shop, which opened in Hoxton in London in 1992, I think is right. Um, because it is Lesbian Visibility Week, I'd just like to say, Kai, you are a lesbian, is that correct? Uh, I certainly am, yeah, out and proud. Good to hear, good to hear that. Um, now, interestingly, I think a lot of non-lesbians might define a lesbian by the fact that they have sex with other women. Women who have sex with other women are lesbians. But interestingly, you, Kai, as a sex shop owner, don't totally buy that. And you, you have some interesting thoughts on that. No, I don't buy it. I, um, and I think it's kind of one of the things that makes it very hard uh, for, for lesbians to come out in a way, because it's kind of, you know, uh, nobody, nobody, you know, nobody kind of thinks what you're doing in bed when you mention, you know, what, whoever it is, your partner, your male partner. But as soon as you sort of say, I'm a lesbian, it immediately goes straight to kind of, you know, bedroom scenes. Um, and of course, you know, it's, uh, of course it's, you know, of course, it's a sexual attraction for a lot of us, uh, but I think it's as much a, an emotional attraction. You know, it's about who you who you connect with emotionally, who you can fall, who you fall in love with, or can fall in love with, or have the potential to fall in love with, um, as much as who whose knickers you rip off, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Um, and you know, this I think that this is a really um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's you know, even now in this day and age, where you know. To, you know we've got gay marriage that it's, there's so much more acceptability about it it's still coming out at work now look I, I haven't worked in the corporate sector ever but I can imagine it being really quite a hard thing because you know you're having a cup of coffee you know and you say oh, I'm a lesbian and immediately it goes straight to kind of lesbian porn scenes you know rather than you know the dom the domestic kind of life that any we all have you know um, well, the, one of the, 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 the porn image often is what most non-lesbian women will imagine as well, which, as we've talked about before, is nowhere near most people's reality. Maybe some people's. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't, no it's, I mean, it's a massive, massive um, complaint, isn't it, uh, about lesbian, lesbian porn. They all have huge, great big talons. Um, and look very, very uncomfortable as they kind of descend, uh, descend south. <laughs> Which no, it has not been my experience of um, of lesbians. Shall we say that? Um, it, it, I mean, porn is porn is pro problematical anyway. I think for for women, um, in that it's it is it is pure fantasy. Where you know, there's no and there's nothing wrong with that. That the fact that it's fantasy, but for um, you know, lots of straight women, it, porn is the only place uh, where they actually see other women's vulvas. So, you know, it, it's, uh, so I think that, you know, I think there's problems on both sides and, and at Shush, what we're dealing with is, is all women's sexuality and their, their, their right to explore and enjoy and own their sexuality and, and their bodies, you know, and there's so much kind of taboo and shaming going on around uh, women's bodies and particularly you know the vulva you know the, the, so much kind of um anxiety you know that there's a ma there's a reason why now can i say it right lappy lappy plasties basically the trimming of your labia lips is um you know it's like one of the biggest cosmetic surgery uh rises yeah. you know along you know huge amounts of women are, are seeking seeking to have their their lips reshaped and cut basically mm -hmm. cut off um and uh you know that there's, there's a reason for that and what we need to kind of uh, look at it and really try and empower women to know that you know that the, that that with whatever shape it's all beautiful and it's all normal um and so yeah porn has i was gonna say so, in, in your store i know that you have apart from all those wonderful looking things behind you which the mind boggles as to what they all are oh, that's, that's, 
Oh, Ra Rachel, that's off. This is, I've put you on a nice safe. I could have turned you, spun you around and really, really made your eyes boggle. No, this is the safe one. This is all, this is lubes and uh, oh, flavoured I can't on your... <laughs> you can zoom in later. <laughs> we'll have a look later. I can't really see to investigate properly, but yeah. um, I know that you, apart from the things that you can actually buy items, that you can also do workshops, which I think are really important because something that Shush, I know, advocates for is permission to talk, giving women, as we've just talked about, permission to talk about every side of sex, sexuality, what we talked about before about a healthy approach to sex as well as healthy sexuality and to give them permission to talk about the pain that they might feel as well because mm. there's a lot of pain and pleasure for some women women who as i know i mean women who have maybe experienced um well you know you uh, women who have trouble having sex for various reasons maybe yeah. you know, Look, I, I, in a way, I kind of feel like, I mean, the reason I, st the reason I started Shush was because, you know, uh, way back in, in like, the early 90s, the, the, you know, this was the, U the UK's first ever, actually the first in Europe, to prioritise female women's pleasure. Uh, and it was seen as a hugely radical thing. I mean, even now it's really, really radical. Imagine what it was like in the early 90s. I mean, we had huge amounts of press from it. It was all positive. But the very fact that there wasn't anywhere um, and that all the toys uh, and all the, um, uh, the messages, everything was to do with uh, women being kind of uh, the receivers of pleasure, the passive receiver, you know, the passive receptacles in a way. Um, rather than actually owning our own pleasure and having the right to explore what pleasure means for us um, and, and to understand that, you know, that it's a journey wherever you are in your life and, you know, to do with the different kind of, you know, you know, I don't know, in teenage years, think how in insecure we were about, about that. And then, you know, with different lovers and different times and different sizes when our bodies have been, uh, how we felt about our bodies, it's a constant journey. Um, so, you, so yes, we sell products, but actually it's, it's about kind of creating a comfortable atmosphere where people can actually talk about their relationship to their sexuality and um, their bodies and the pleasure or not uh, their bodies give them and so uh, what what's fabulous about that is that it, um, is that when women actually talk open up or are given this permission to actually have this conversation and um, then they, they really share such intimate stuff with with us um, and you know yes this you know there's huge there's huge amounts of issues around sex that just isn't being talked about um what in 10 women are uh are likely again it's difficult to get statistics because again women's sexuality isn't really studied because it's not deemed to be important um but about one in 10 women uh uh have painful sex painful penetrative sex and feel very kind of alone in that um one in four women have uh, I mean, this is a, a statistic that's around. One in four women uh, uh, will have been will be survivors of sexual violence. Um, often they're not they're silenced. Um, and we started we actually started a thing called Cafe V because uh, a woman came into the shop and felt so compelled after a visit to write to us and say she'd had this amazing experience because we're not all about you know we're very much about. Um, you know, female pleasure, and it's not all about penetration. We don't do all that kind of, you know, <laughs> there's no dick-shaped toys here, and there's nothing realistic. It's, um, and she actually wrote and said she'd had this amazing experience and that she um, she should tell us why. And when she was a teenager, she was raped, and she'd had loads of psychological help, but no, no help actually getting back into her body. So I contacted her, and we set up something called Cafe V because it, you know, I, I can often get on my soapbox and I did about that because it, it seems like yet again, women's sexuality is, is seen as something very kind of, you know, in our heads, you know, we're, we're, um, we're okay as, lo as long as we're not getting lustful or, or it's about our bodies or it's about this kind of real 
um, feeling, you know, if it's, as long as it's in our consciousness and it's all about massage and touchy feely and, you know, <laughs> feminine stuff, that's okay. But once it gets to be really kind of body, body, bodily, I know there's a better word for that, I'm not sure what it is. Once it gets to be that, I think it's quite frightening actually for society. And so it's a lot of time ignored. So I think uh, there were so many um, issues that, and you talked about Cafe V as well, but that um, I'm hoping that you and I are going to be able to do something that we've mentioned before, something called um, Pillow Pod, which is going to be part of Pod Diva, an ongoing audio um, platform. And that we're going to talk about some of these issues in detail on a regular basis. And hopefully we will be getting diva listeners involved and have them ask questions. I know it's difficult right now to talk about anything and not refer to the pandemic that we are all under lock and key from and suffering through. There will be people um, who may be uh, locked down at home very happily and having a lovely time with their wives and partners. And there will be others who are maybe suffering on a long distance relationship. There will be those who are locked down maybe with ex-partners, which must be very difficult. And I know we talked a little bit about like helping these people or questions or advice for them. I don't know if there's anything you can say to people listening in lockdown. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's tricky, isn't it? I mean, I think, you know, I think uh, the first thing I need to say is, I'm, you know, I'm not an expert. I've talked to tens and thousands of women through through the shop, and that's, um, I guess, that's, uh, for me, the most important thing is to open up the conversation, because when things are locked down, <laughs> duh, duh, when things are locked down, then that's when real kind of damage happens when you know when you literally you put a box on it and then you put a chain around it and then you put another you know then then that becomes really um really tricky so um i think i think it's around and hopefully we can go in, go more into this in uh, pillow diva pillow pod um yeah. because we need you know because it's only by people opening up i mean in terms of lockdown god you know i do think um Bottom, the bottom line is that sex raises your, um, having sex and orgasms raises your immune system. So there's every reason, uh, hey, <laughs> there's every reason to be getting down, you know, at this time. And, you know, a lot of people are at home with loads of time on their hands. So, you know, now yep. is the time to really explore if, if you know, if you're, if you're on your own or if you're with a partner, you know, and especially a good time as well to reconnect. Hi, it's, okay. it's been great talking to you for this first sort of round of what I hope is going to become Pillow Pod um, for Lesbian Visibility Week. Um, anyone who doesn't know your store, Shush is online and is still doing deliveries at this time, I understand, and working very oh, yes. hard at the sound of it. In her store, even though the shop is closed, she's working very hard. And um, if you've enjoyed listening to this and want to hear more, please do listen out more Pillow Pod in the future. Kai, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Pod Diva.